Why is the area of a triangle 1 half base times height? So maybe you're like me, and you memorized this formula as a kid, but you never really took the time to understand why this is true. Where does this formula come from? So let's start from a rectangle here, and let's say it has a length of L and a width of W, and one of the things about rectangles is that they have all right angles, so we can notate that here. Now one thing about finding these intuitions is that it's often very, very helpful, like so extremely helpful, to be able to see things in a different light, from a different perspective. And more often than not, what that means, in, at least in, in geometry, is adding or removing things, lines especially, to shapes, to figures. So what's something that we can draw on this rectangle to change it into some number of triangles. And I very much encourage you to pause the video, literally pause the video now, and think about something you can do to this rectangle that will change it into two or more triangles. So one thing we can do is that we can draw a straight line from one corner to the other corner, like so. And then what that gets us is that because that's a straight line and because this is a rectangle with right angles, that gets us a right triangle. Or more specifically, it gets us two right triangles. So because it's a rectangle, the two sides that are the width are the same length, and the two sides that are the length are the same length. What that leaves us with is two identical right triangles. They're simply flipped. They're, they're in different orientations. So if we wanted to get the area of one of those right triangles, what would that be? Well, first, let's write our equation that the area of the whole rectangle is length times width. Then, because we notice that the rectangle covers the same area as the two identical right triangles, let's rewrite that area as two times the area of the right triangle. So now, when we divide both sides by two, we end up with our triangle area formula one-half length times width. Now when we're talking about triangles, we typically don't use length and width. We use the words base and height, but it's the same dimensions. We're referring to the same things. So it's one-half base times height. So that's where the right triangle formula comes in. But is that the only type of triangle that we can have? Well, let's think about this methodically. So if we start with a line, and then we say, how would we change this into a triangle? Like what other things would we add to make this into a triangle? And you might be saying, uh, duh, well, you gotta draw more lines and then connect them so that it's got three sides. Well, yes, but what I'm getting at is where does that point sit in relation to the initial line that we drew. So if we add a perpendicular line to our line segment, and then if we think about when we're adding the other two sides of a triangle that will meet at a point, where would that point show up in relation to this perpendicular line that we just added? And I encourage you to pause the video for a moment and think about that. So there are really three different places where that point can show up in relation to this perpendicular line. So the first place would be if the point is to the left, so to speak, of our perpendicular line here. And what would that look like? Well, if we draw an example of that, it might look like that. And that gives us an obtuse triangle, obtuse being that it's a triangle with an angle that is more than 90 degrees. So specifically, that's this angle here. Now, a neat thing to realize here is that in this sort of left area, it doesn't actually matter where the point is exactly, because all of these triangles are still obtuse. As long as that point is to the left of this line, the triangle that we form by adding sides that intersect at that point will be obtuse. Huh, that's pretty cool. Now, where else could the point be? Well, another place that it could be is directly on the line. And if we make an example of that, 
that gives us, well, what is this? Well, we said that this line that we drew that intersected with our base, with our initial line segment, we said that it's perpendicular. So that means that we have a triangle with a right angle. So we have a right triangle. Awesome. So the point could be to the left of the line, it could be on the line, and then what's the other case? Well, it could be to the right of the line. Now a neat thing to realize here is that's actually all of the cases. Because we recognize that we can add another perpendicular line that intersects with the endpoint of the base on the right side. What if the point is on that line? Well, then we have a right triangle to that side. What if the point is beyond that? Then we have an obtuse triangle to that side. Now let's consider the case where the point is in between these lines. It could be a right triangle. For example, if both of the base angles are 45 degrees, that means the point where they meet has to be 90 degrees. So the sum of the angles is still 180 degrees. It could be obtuse. For example, if the base angles change to 20 degrees each, this means that the top angle now has to be 140 degrees. Or the triangle could be acute. For example, if all of the angles are 60 degrees. And there's symmetry here across the base as well. The same reasoning holds true for all of these cases if we flip the triangle across its base. So that's actually all of the cases. That was sort of a long detour, but the point of going through that is to visualize the three distinct types of triangles by angle, right, acute, and obtuse. And we want to intuit where this area formula comes from for each of those triangle types. So we've done the right triangle one. All right, let's take a look at the acute triangle. How would it work for that? Okay, so here we have an acute triangle and then Remember what was helpful, what was the technique that we used on that rectangle initially to sort of put us on the path to getting that intuition for the formula? Well, it's essentially adding or removing lines to this shape to view it in a different perspective, to see it differently. So we know that we have a formula for right angle triangles. So is there something that we can do to it that will get us right triangles? And I encourage you again to pause the video and, and think about that for a moment. So one thing we can do is if we add a line from this top point here and then intersecting the base at a right angle, so at a 90 degree angle, so that line's perpendicular. Now, if we look at this whole figure, we might be able to see it as two right triangles. Hmm, so that's pretty cool. So let's add in some labels here. So we'll call that X and that one Y and that height Z. So we already have the formula for the area of a right triangle. So let's plug in some numbers here. So let's look at the triangles individually first. So for our left right triangle, we have one half base, which is X times the height, which is Z. And then for our right triangle, we have one half base, which is Y times the height, which is Z and then the triangle that we're looking for is what? Well, it's the sum of both of these smaller right triangles. So algebraically, that would be one half X times Z plus one half Y times Z. Now, if we look at this algebraic expression, one thing we might notice is that it has two terms. Do those terms have any common factors? Well, it turns out they do. They both have one half and they both have Z which means we can factor those out. So we get one half Z, and then the factors that they didn't share were X in that one and Y in the second one. So it's X plus Y. So we have one half Z, which is our height, times X plus Y, which is the base of our original triangle. Isn't that pretty cool? It's the same formula, and now we've done it for right triangles and for acute triangles. Okay, so what about that third one though? There was a third type of triangle, an obtuse triangle. Well, let's take a look. Let's say we have a triangle like this, and we'll draw an obtuse triangle here. Well, what was the technique that we used for the right triangle and the acute triangle that worked so well? Again, it was adding or removing lines to a figure, to, to a shape, to be able to see it in a different perspective. 
So we have a formula for right triangles and for acute triangles. What can we do to this obtuse triangle to view it differently? And I encourage you again to pause the video and take a moment to think about that. So one thing that we can do is we can extend some of the sides of this obtuse triangle. Specifically, I'm thinking about this side here on the obtuse angle. So if we extend that side a bit, and extending a side, so literally we're extending the line that that side sits on. How does that help us? Well, one other thing that we can do is if we draw in another line that intersects this top point here and also intersects the side that we extended, and it specifically it intersects that side at a right angle, what have we done here? Well, now if we look at this whole shape that we've created, what do we have? Three straight sides enclosing an area, and there's one right angle. That's a right triangle. Huh, that's pretty cool. So we've created a right triangle. We have a formula for the area of a right triangle. Take another look at this though. Have we only created one right triangle? Well, no, actually, we've created two. We've created this large one here. We've also created this small one here. And then what's the triangle that we're looking for? Well, it's the area of the large one minus the area of this small one. Interesting. We have a formula for the area of right triangles. And we know that the area of this obtuse triangle is the difference between two right triangles. That's pretty cool. Let's add some labels to sides here. So let's call this one E, we'll call that F, and we'll call this one G here. And then if we express this algebraically, we'd have the area of our large right triangle is one half our base, which is E plus F, times our height, which is G. The area of our small right triangle is one half the base, which is E, times the height is G. So the area of the obtuse triangle that we're looking for is the area of the large right triangle minus the area of the small right triangle. Again, here we have an expression. Are there common factors? There are. We have one half, which is a common factor, and g, which is another common factor. So factoring those out, we get one half g times e plus f minus e, the e's cancel, and we get one half g, which is our height, times f, which is the base of the obtuse triangle. So here again, we have the same formula for an obtuse triangle as we have for an acute triangle and for a right triangle. Isn't that neat? I think that's so neat. Now, while the formulas are certainly useful and they're, they're very handy shortcuts, one thing I want to stress is that the, the way to get to those, right? So the, like, how does the intuition happen? That sort of adding, removing lines to see the shapes in a different perspective, that's an example of sort of, sort of creative and playful thinking, which is so incredibly useful. That's really the main point, the main core of, of what I wanted to stress here. So anyway, I hope you found that helpful. I know going through this has been extremely helpful for me. Make sure to like, comment what you thought. Uh, make sure to subscribe and tell a friend who needs to see this. Have a wonderful day, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.